My field of uh, expertise is in ceramic processing. I'm particularly interested in uh, uh, the issue of microstructure property relationships. Uh, but quite frankly, over the years, I've worked on all aspects of ceramic processing, starting from powder synthesis through forming operations uh, to making shapes and like that, uh, using a variety of different techniques, sol gel, chemistry, precipitation, all of this. Uh, but where we've really you know, put a lot of effort is into phase transformation uh, and sintering and in microstructure evolution. Uh, and those applications or those interests are really driven by particular applications because in the field of ceramics and materials in general it's, just, it's a microstructure property relationship which is the most important. So a good example um, the problem we're working on right now is on uh, neodymium doped uh, YAG, yttrium aluminum garnet. Uh, this is a material that uh, if you get the processing correct uh, it is transparent. Uh, you can look right through it like window glass uh, and the reason it's important is it's a material used for laser gain media. That is, it is the, the foundation for uh, CO2 lasers. Uh, and so what is used today are single crystals, and those are grown by Chakralski. They're gr it's a huge market. Uh, basically, every metal cutting tool that you know, laser cutting tool, is, um, has in the middle of it some NDA single crystal. Uh, but as we want to pump these uh, lasers at higher power, uh, what we find is that the uh, single crystals have enough heterogeneity, enough imperfection in them that they can't manage the load. Well, it was discovered in uh, Japan that, in fact, if you substitute in ceramic for single crystal, that uh, you could actually drive uh, these at much higher powers. Now, you can think of all kinds of reasons why you'd want higher power. Some of them having to do with, of course, laser cutting and like that. Uh, there are people in the United States that are more interested in DO types of applications. Uh, but what's the interesting paradigm shift is substituting in ceramic for single crystal. So in the case of NDEG, uh, we've been working on this now for over five years or so, trying to understand the issues of how do you center a material to perfection? Because you cannot have second phases, you cannot have pores, you cannot have a a material coating the grain boundaries, uh, you have to get rid of all of this for this material to be as transparent as window glass uh, or as transparent as a single crystal. So that's one of the drivers for our work in sintering, for example. Uh, likewise, uh, another area is again trying to replace single crystal. We work on textured ceramics. So in our work on textured ceramics, we are tr trying to understand how to develop orientation, crystallographic orientation of the grains. So we developed a process called templated grain growth. And in the templated grain growth process, what we've done is we've introduced basically seed crystals to the material before densification. Uh, upon densification, uh, or during the farming, we align the crystals so that they have a particular orient uh, crystallographic orientation. And then what we've tried to learn is how to do the densification such that the material becomes highly dense. In this case, it doesn't have to be 100% dense, but highly dense. And then once we get to that stage, those seed crystals that we put in, they will then grow and consume the rest of the matrix. So whatever the orientation was of the seed crystals, uh, we call them template particles. Whatever that orientation is, that's the orientation of the final ceramic. So the reason we're interested in that is because what we're trying to do is get a particular orientation, uh, the same orientation as you would have in a single crystal. Uh, research at Penn State and earlier in Japan has demonstrated that single crystals of a variety of piezoelectric materials uh, actually have just incredible piezo piezoelectric response. Uh, and so we're always looking for better piezoelectric response, whether it is in actuator applications, transducers, uh, load leveling, a, a variety of applications. Um, and so the single crystals uh, are, have their own problems, okay? Uh, they ha have good properties, but they have some heterogeneity associated with the growth process. And so by using a ceramic approach, polycrystalline ceramic approach, and orientation, we hope to then achieve the same kind of properties as uh, the single crystals. So we've been doing this kind of work for, for geez, almost 10 years now, and we've had great success. Uh, the materials are easily as maybe 75% 
of the single crystal properties, uh, which in many applications is quite sufficient. Uh, we're still working real hard though on how to align and position all of these template particles such that the material really is 90%, 95% of the single crystal properties. Uh, and so there's a real driver uh, in terms of performance. The real driver actually is uh, not just the microstructure property relation. The real driver is cost. Uh, we can make these materials much less expensive than uh, the, grown, the single crystal grown crystals. There they're grown by the Bridgman process. It's a very slow process. It takes very special uh, containment and uh, using basically ceramic processing approaches using powders and our tape cast, we use tape casting to orient the crystals, looking at some new ways of doing orientation. Uh, by doing that, we can cut the cost by uh, easily 10%, which uh, in that market is huge. Uh, the other application arena, and where it, uh, maybe we may have some inroads, and that is uh, in Navy. Uh, of course, they use huge transducer arrays on the fronts of submarines, on ships, all kinds of things. And quite frankly, these are, these are very, very large. I mean, feet, you know, even bigger than that. And so to do that in single crystal uh, form would be just prohibitively expensive. And so if you can do it at a lower cost option, then you can actually hope to insert the developments in the materials that is in the kind of uh, piezoelectric materials that have been discovered, uh, we have to have some hope of inserting those into these applications. So those are two things that are really driving the kind of research that goes on in my lab. Interestingly, they're both, uh, in, both of them are substituting out single crystals. Uh, in both of them, they have very unique properties as single crystal form, and we think, in the, in the, well, we know actually if we can succeed, uh, there's a cost advantage, performance advantage uh, as well. So that's kind of the types of things that I work on.